Hello, hello! Or Phidias Pete here, coming at you straight from the middle of a Robert Heinlein novel, The Chrysalid Who Punches Through Walls, in XCOM 2. And, you know, let me tell you, this, uh, this, this situation we're in here, it's every bit as much a bunch of bullshit as that novel was. And I'm talking about the cat who walks through walls, but... Somebody out there right now is probably going, Oh, Pete, now you're going to fire shots at one of science fiction's greatest just because you're mad that Sigourney Weaver got her wig split like an enemy of the state during Robespierre's terror post-French Revolution. No. Well, I mean, yes, I am mad, but especially about the metaphor I just made because it was bad. But cut me some slack. It's not easy to come up with a situation where somebody cut a wig into and getting your powdered wig guillotine during the French Revolution was the best my brain could do given the fact that I'm basically on tilt right now. But, oh, back to my main point, I'm going to fire some shots at Highland because, honestly, most of his stuff, it was pretty shitty. Even the stuff people still revere today, Stranger in a Strange Land, Starship Troopers, they were not especially well written. They really weren't. The problem with the Heinlein deal is that most people read those novels as young adults, which is before they've really developed a nose for snuffling out quality media, but ever after... They're then viewing the works of Heinlein through rose-tinted glasses of nostalgia. You know, basically the same way hipsters get really attached to BuzzFeed articles about stuff that, like, 20 things only 90s kids will remember, and it's inevitably just going to be like a reference to the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, the Big Fat Homer episode of The Simpsons, and then a list of 19 Game Boy games that fucking nobody played. Stranger in a Strange Land and Starship Troopers, they're the fresh prince and the Simpsons of this metaphor, and everything else Heinlein wrote, especially the jumble fuck time in continuity bullshit of the moon is a harsh mistress and its follow-ups, or prequels or whatnot, I don't know. There was so much continuity violation going on in there, you can't really even order the novels. Those are the 19 Game Boy games that nobody cared about. Which is to say, they were really shitty, because I hate to break it to you 90s kids, but apart from Tetris, there were also no good games ever released for Nintendo's Game Boy. I'm busting bubbles all over the place. It, it turned about as fair play. If XCOM's gonna rain on my parade, sorry hipsters, I'm raining right back. Moving out. Jamie Lee Curtis has been nigh on useless this episode, so she's gonna spend the rest of this mission hauling the dead ass of Sigourney Weaver around. Morgan Freeman, you're already maxed rank, so I don't really want to feed you a kill on this chrysalid soldier if I can avoid it. I'd really rather somebody else get it. Harrison Ford, if possible, and definitely possible, because this is a guaranteed kill shot. It's down. Yeah, he's down, all right. You know what else is down? My fucking spirits, that's what. Yeah. So Harrison Ford is reloaded. Morgan Freeman has chrysalid poison. We're going to have to deal with that. Fortunately, we still have Sylvester Stallone, so give me a old... No, not an airdrop, though. Very funny going for the airdrop, by the way, Stallone, since the one unit who could have benefited from the airdrop can no longer benefit it based on the fact that they're dead. Oh, hey, you know, PJ, like sometimes when you get in the ring, you best, best, uh, best, 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 just uh, kick a man when he's down. Don't make me bring up the Gina Davis thing, Stallone. Oh, you see now, kicking a man when he's down and just going for the straight low blow is not quite the same. I'm salty. Don't don't trifle with me this episode, Saloon. Honestly, I'm just not in the mood. So we're going to continue doing our rearm and reloading because we have unlimited time. We've got a bunch of ground to cover. Somebody's got to go pick up a dead Sigourney Weaver and haul her by main force through the rest of this mission. And I was thinking maybe we'd uh, extend this one a little bit on the back end and camp some reinforcement pods just for some, you know, juicy, fun kills. But turns out that's really not going to be possible. How many enemies have we killed, by the way? We got this guy and his two little snake buddies. I mean, stupid piece of crap. Two little snake buddies we had. So that's three. Crystal Soldier makes four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's at least one more pod of something lurking about this map, and it's going to be up to Bruce Willis to find it. Because I'll be damned if I'm going to stumble into something else I am not expecting. I've, I've had enough of the unexpected already this episode, which is an unexpected critical going straight through Sigourney Weaver's dome. Nope, nobody else. Nope, nobody else does nothing. You got me? Capiche? Team, just sit here and camp until Bruce Willis finds him. It's going to be absolutely riveting gameplay, by the way, but since every enemy has every ability now in the Long War perk pack and every shot is always a critical, we may have to start adopting some more Long War-ish strategies as much as it pains me to do so. Although... Now that I've said that, I'm, I'm actually thinking maybe that's what rounded us up and sunk us into this mess in the first place. What if we, if we'd been playing our more aggressive play style, 
We might have just ran in and eliminated that pod. Instead, we tried to lock him down foolishly with Dane Judy Danch and some serpent who had lightning reflexes dodged her lockdown ability with its plus 50 to hit and bonus damage. Also, at the end of this episode, I think Dane Judy Danch is probably going to wind up respect because it turns out it, defensive abilities are almost never, ever worth it. They just, they, they don't work reliably enough to be a quality investment of training time and skills. I have no idea how Bruce Willis spotted those guys over there, but sure. But back to the, 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 the training thing, they're almost never worth it because an enemy who is dead cannot hurt you under any circumstances. There's no amount of bullshit or luck or anything that can allow a dead enemy to cause you harm. Dead is dead. You lock down five guys, sure, maybe they've got a 1% chance to hit you. Let's say it is, in fact, a 1% chance to hit you. But you know what? They shoot at you 100 times, eventually, you're getting hit. Dead? 0%. There you go. So is there any way Jamie Lee Curtis could get a shot at those guys from squad site? I very much would like to set up just a massive Overwatch ambush on that sectopod and see if we can't get him to walk into it. Which means basically the whole team is going to have to shift position by the whole width of the field. With the possible exception of Morgan Freeman, who may be exactly where we want him. You know what? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm taking, I've taken too many chances already this mission. I've paid the price for taking those chances as well. That's it. No more. I'm done. Bruce Willis, go ahead and keep an eye on those, dude. I mean, I, I actually need Bruce Willis to be able to continue to see that pod. So let's bring him up here. My love for Shinobis, by the way, continues to grow exponentially. The more exposure I get to the Shinobi, the more I come to appreciate the subtleties that they bring to the gameplay. They're like a mobile mimic beacon. No problem, boss. Or not a mimic beacon, but they're rather like a mobile battle scanner that never runs out. They are supremely good. Dane Judy Dench, get over behind this tree. Stallone, you're probably fine right where you are, actually. Somebody's got to keep an eye on Sigourney Weaver's corpse. Shatner, you're not going to get spotted here. Shatner is our most important shooter. Jamie Lee Curtis can work from farther away because she's got the squad sight. We want Willie Shats behind this tree. Sectopod is on the move. They're going to patrol into us. On the turn where we were trying to set up for the ambush... Of course, is the turn they patrolled into us. Nice shot, though, from Morgan Freeman. At least we got something out of it. I want to say it was pretty good, but in fact, it wasn't. I'd be more concerned about how we were going to deal with this pod since we don't have any grenadiers to destroy terrain, but the nice thing is, is this sectopod, he's going to handle all of the terrain destruction for us. The one thing we have to remember, don't shoot the sectopod from, like, two feet away. That, that would be bad. Morgan Freeman, double 90% for rapid fire. Probably not enough to get the kill. Damn it, Shatner. Damn it. We, Jamie Lee. You know what? Damn everyone at this point. Damn all of y'all. That, that's what I'm going to go with here. Damn everybody. Definite hits on the Sectopod. Chances at the Lancer. Chances at the Sentinel. I'm pretty sure there was a Shield Bearer back there. Well... If we don't have to hit the sectopod here, that does open up some opportunities. What's our chance to shut this bad boy down? We're going to get exactly one turn if we shut him down, because he's got two actions. They're both going to skip, and then he'll be back next turn. A failed hack will increase this target's aim and defense stats. That's real bad. We're definitely not going to try and take control. I don't trust Sylvester Stallone's University of Phoenix online education. Okay, fine, Pete. You're right. It turns out you would have been definitely wrong to trust the programming chops through the University of Phoenix online. But as it turns out, you know, the University of Phoenix is just good enough to do a half ass job. You need a job done perfectly, the University of Phoenix cannot deliver. But if you need just enough skill to do a half ass job, the University of Phoenix Online is the educational institution of choice. So there's a man here. 
There's a man here. And there's a sectopod. We need, theoretically, all of these men to be dead. Harrison Ford, you can only double tap the sectopod, which really is fine as long as somebody else can do something to the rest of these dudes. Maybe now's the time Bruce Willis contributes. You know what? Yes, Bruce Willis, this is in fact what you're going to do. Come over here and stab the holy living shit out of this man. Not from that tile, though. This tile? Yeah, much better. This is a kill shot from Bruce Willis. He's got a 4% chance to miss, but as long as he doesn't muck it, this dude is it. Oh, Bruce Willis would have been so awesome if you came down and did like a falling strike Dark Souls style from that dude. That would have been beautiful. Just to come over and did like a roof jump and drop down on his head. Oh, man, it would have been so sweet. Okay, Morgan Freeman, you can, like, you're definitely going to kill this guy, right? This is not a free shot. It's also not very likely to hit. Give me the double 70s. If either one of them connects, we'll be fine. Well, double 70s, and by which I mean double 55s. You're going to whiff twice, aren't you, Freeman? Um, not going to lie, Pete. I had considered it. And, in fact, decided that it was the right thing to do. Really, guys, we just need to kill this one dude. You know what? Fine. Here. Take a hail bullets. That's it. This will not be a kill shot, but it makes it so that anyone with a stock can finish this guy off. He now has no armor and three health. Sylvester Stallone can definitely... Oh, already took his turn. Right. Uh, Jamie Lee? Can you get a flank shot on him? Here, do this. Run over here and flank shot him and kill him with a pistol. One, because it's like an insult to injury kind of... A 44% chance to hit him. Have I mentioned lately that I hate everything? You have a 26% chance. Why is this guy fucking unhittable? What did this guy do? He really ate his Wheaties. Gonna get me some of those Wheaties. All right, well, fine. You want to be an unhittable piece of shit? I got the solution to your problem right here, champ. Oh, be like, oh, nobody can touch me. I'm immune to bullets. You know what you're not immune to? Fucking grenades. Chew on this. I beg your pardon? I'd like to point out, am I the only person here who just saw a thing that said missed guaranteed hit? Am, am I the only one who saw that? Was that just me? Missed guaranteed hit? I got nothing. Jamie Lee Curtis, you know what? I appreciate your contributions to the project. Thank you. <sighs> My salt levels are beyond huge. And now it occurs to me, too, since defensive abilities are going to be always pointless. Hey, free action. Well, you know what? That's something. Nice work, Harrison Ford. Go ahead and take that freebie and shoot this pitch again. Yeah, we're losing a lot of damage to the armor, but we're still getting something out of it. Bruce Willis, I would like you to not be near that sectopod. Did you just set yourself on fire? Okay, good, because I was going to be supremely angry had you set yourself on fire. William Shatner, that armor's got to go. Double chain shot, can't miss. This may kill him, actually. Nope, three damage. Something. More damage, please. There we go. Followed it up with nine. All of the armor is gone. That's the double shred. Who do I want to take the kill shot? You know what? Harrison Ford, I kind of feel like maybe you earned this one. This hair trigger, though, is all over the place. Harrison Ford's firing eight, nine shots a turn. It's like he's putting a quick critique on some of Heinlein's lesser works. Nice work. We just scavenged an absolute buttload of materials from that. So what we need to do now is beginning... We got to go set the bomb and start moving toward the exit, which means somebody's going to have to grab Sigourney Weaver's corpse. Which... Where did that go, by the way? Oh, okay. Uh, Jamie Lee, you want to come, come snag that? I can't tell what tile it's in. It might be in the tile Harrison Ford is standing in. Let's see if we can pick her up from here. Can we grab her? Just everybody finds scatter, guys. Here's what we're going to do. Come at it Stooges style. Just do a quick Stooge scatter. 
There are no more enemies on this map until reinforcements show up. It's only a matter of time until reinforcements show up, but when they do show up, I would like to have everyone as clustered together as possible. Bruce Willis, you're probably good. No more concealment from the Bruce. Trojan virus? That's a pretty damn effective computer virus right there. It's still infecting him after he's dead. It's remarkably powerful. Yeah, I'm advised, Bradford. Con consider me advised. These guys just walked into a great big bowl of fuck you. Uh, here, Morgan Freeman. You know what to do. Somebody really does need to go set the bomb, though, by the way. Could we, uh... William Shatner, you need ammo. You know what? Screw it. You don't need ammo that bad. I want you on Overwatch. When these guys land, I want them dead. Jamie Lee Curtis, can you pick up this corpse? Yes, good. And all you're going to do is just run around and hide behind this tree. You got to preserve Sigourney Weaver's legacy. Um, Harrison Ford, bring you over here behind this log. You're going to be on Overwatch. Jamie Lee, you can't really do anything, so you're just going to skip the rest of your turn. Dane Judy Dench, I need you in a position to fire when these guys land. You get a full clip. Overwatch. Overwatch. Jamie Lee, again, you're going to do literally nothing. Somebody then has to go plant. Somebody has to go set us up the bomb. That somebody's going to be Bruce Willis. The He's the fastest man on the team. Look at him move. 62 years old. Yeah, He's like a Heisman Trophy winner. It's like an O.J. Simpson out there, except less incarcerated. Is O.J. still in jail? I don't remember. Yeah. You know what? This one's for Sigourney Weaver. Also, I think one of them may have landed on Morgan Freeman. Nope, right next to him, though. Well, this one's for Sigourney Weaver. Just get shit on all of you. Now, or miss a lot, Freeman. That's uh, definitely another possibility. This robot's just going to go on Overwatch, which means we're going to get exactly one shot out of the rest of the team. Okay. That guy's basically dead. Overwatch from anyone with a stock kills him. Or we could waste a lot of damage by having William Shatner pump his guts full of lead with his last bullet. Here comes Freeman. Eight damage is something. That guy should also be killable by anyone with a stock. But Harrison Ford. Good God, Harrison Ford's lights out. Uh, Oak you weapons, kid. Ancient religions. Good blaster. You know the rule, Pete. So, William Shatner, you're going to reload, and then you're going to knock this man out of Overwatch and also destroy most of his armor. Pretty good work. Overwatch is removed. Not that it really matters much for Morgan Freeman because he does have lightning reflexes, which we've learned effectively makes you unhittable by an unlimited amount of Overwatch. Important lesson. And uh, not only did we... You know what, Harrison Ford? You earned this. I'm going to feed you kills, Harrison. And reload. Oh, you think, Bradford, we're not picking up any additional contacts near the AO? Maybe it's because they're terrified to land in our running blender. One could only assume. Jamie Lee, don't don't really do anything. Set set up up the bomb here, please. Thank you. Also, should you be smoking around a volatile explosive? I don't I don't want to fire shots at at a bad habit because you know everybody has a bad habit. That's really what smoking boils down to. It's just a bad habit. Honestly, I kind of feel like everybody needs a vice, really. I'm not uh, not really one prone to judging people for their vices. Everybody kind of needs a vice. It's what makes you you. Your particular set of vices, they're a big part of your character. But sometimes, you know, you got to think about the practical side of things. And when you're working with volatile explosives, maybe having a lit cigarette in your mouth is not the greatest idea. Be like, oh, Pete, it's some kind of plastic compound. You can actually pour that stuff in a gasoline fire and it won't detonate. Okay, fine. Maybe maybe it won't detonate if you drop it in a gasoline fire. But, it's, you know, why why tempt fate? That's the question. Why, why tempt fate? I'm going to wait for another pot of reinforcements. I'm, I'm feeling really salty about Sigourney Weaver. And I want... I, yeah, honestly, I just want some payback. That's really all I'm looking for here. Just want some payback. Jamie Lee Curtis, I know you can't do anything when you got that body. Nope. 
I know, Bradford. Little busy. X4 charges are planted. I kind of want to make the aliens pay for this one. And I can drop the exit zone wherever the shit I please, by the way, Bradford. Well, don't worry about it, Bradford. I, uh, did it ever occur to you, Bradford, that maybe I want them inbound on my position? Did it ever occur to you that this is exactly what we trained for? What I've been waiting for? What I've been praying for? A chance to strike back at the foes that have hurt me so badly? Speaking of which, let's drop the Sky Ranger here. You know what? Let's just drop the Sky Ranger over here so that after we murder these guys with the fusillade of Overwatch, we can also be in or near the exit zone. I don't, you know, let's, let's not let's not make it too difficult. In fact, Jamie Lee Curtis, why don't you just go ahead and leave? Take Sigourney Weaver's rotting, slowly cooling corpse and haul it out of here. You're not going to provide anything anyway. Mostly you're just irritating by making me switch away from you over and over. Overwatch for Willie Schatz. Gonna bring Harrison Ford to this corner cover. He's on Overwatch. Dane Judy Dench. I'm just going to have you stand in the open and be on Overwatch. Again, the, the whole key part of this plan is on Overwatch near the exit zone. Really all we're looking for. Morgan Freeman's going to do most of the heavy lifting anyway. Bruce Willis, I want you a little further back. I mean, I want you to qualify for an Overwatch shot, but I want you a little further away in case we need you to dash in and dice a dude. Got to get that bonus damage from the run-in. Bruce Willis comes running into the ring with a steel chair. Oh, the humanity! Clearly, Bruce did not take the required training at the WWE Academy, and he has literally just murdered a man on live television by striking him in the skull with a steel chair. Someone should have told Bruce this shit isn't actually real. Those combat specialists whiffing on that 79... You love missing that first one, Morgan Freeman. What is up with that? Well, Pete, I like to give them a little hope before I inevitably gun these bitches down. Put them in the ground all the way down downtown. I like to give them a little bit of hope first. Just a tiny iota of hope before it all comes crashing down and their hopes, dreams, and aspirations are destroyed forever. Is that wrong of me, Pete? This is what I ask of you. Also, I'm going to go ahead and shoot this robot here with my free action. I damn near killed him with a single blow and have set up a kill for some other member of the team, but in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and fall on back and you can keep my last shot just in case we need it. You're shitting me that nobody's going to be able to see this robot from the, any of these tiles. Perfect. Okay. Nah, no, I mean, that's fine, x cow. That's the way, uh, that's the way you want to play? That's the way you want to be? Um, it's, it's, it's fine. No, it's really, it's perfectly fine, x cow. What's over there? He's invisible. You're right. No, you win everything, x cow. It's, uh, you, you, you're, you're, you're always right. Always right this plasma grenade, though. How do you like this? You want to be always right? Be always right about Harrison Ford being an amazing, murderous thug. Yeah, you're always right about that, aren't you? Dane Judy Dench? You wouldn't mind fueling you a kill. Stallone wouldn't mind getting you a kill, but you know who really earned a kill this mission? Freaking Bruce Willis. I don't think he's gotten any. He's still, he hasn't been, well, now I got one, but now two. Suck it. Let's get the hell out of here, team. I'm angry. Oh, William Shatner, I'm sorry, I forgot you were there. But, Pete, how could you forget about me? I'm going to be the upcoming star of that show about the basketball thing. William Shatner, take it to the rock. I'm going. I would honestly pay to see that show. Like, whatever sum you asked. A show with Morgan Freeman and, uh... William Shatner becoming the, the greatest basketball legends. They'd have to play for a team that's no good, too. I don't know anything about the NBA, because honestly, watching basketball, I would, I would literally rather watch paint dry than watch the NBA basketball. The paint drying is at least an interesting chemical phenomenon. I know nothing about the NBA, but they would definitely have to play for, like, the worst team in the league so that it could be a total underdog story as they bring them back from the edge of extinction. It'll be like, we play for the LA Kings who are in danger of being moved to Miami for whatever reason. 
be like Pete, Miami already has a theme and the Kings are pretty good. I, if that's the case, I honestly don't care. Like I said, I know nothing about the NBA. But that's the scenario. Fine. Let's say they play for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Are they still a team? If they are, I'm sure they suck. So there you go. It's it's the Timberwolves starring Morgan Freeman and William Shatner. 85-year-old men. One of whom basically doesn't have the use of one of his hands. What, what kind of crossover dribble has Morgan Freeman got? Yeah, well, you know what, Pete? A man may not be able to have a crossover dribble, but when you're as badass as Morgan Freeman, you can simply walk down the court carrying the ball without bouncing it at all, and when the referee tries to accost you for traveling, you can simply say, Did I travel, sir? Or are we all on this journey together? And then his heart will melt a little bit, and you score a cheap layup while he woos at the sound of your baritone. I think maybe you're sort of defeating the purpose of joining the NBA. Oh, Shatner's in it for the glory, Pete. Morgan Freeman is just in it for the cash. Operation Shadow Hand. Oh, okay. Well, that explains the chrysalid then. His shadow hand is how Morgan Freeman got punched through a wall. Well, it all makes sense now. The game tried to tell me. It tried to warn me at the opening of the episode. Be like, watch out, Pete. They're going to fucking punch you through a wall with their shadow hand. And I was just like, oh, sorry, I'm not paying attention. I, 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 I missed that soft cue. Move the furthest. Bruce die soft Willis. He moved a billion, billion miles. He was all over this map. Not killing things, but he was all over the map. Any day now, guys. Any day. I know you're all pretty somber because Sigourney Weaver's corpse's blood is slowly pooling in the back of the Sky Ranger and you're just hopeful that you're not the guy who draws the short straw and has to mop that out. You know what? You're all getting a short straw on this one. I got a whole bunch of mops and buckets. All of you are going to contribute. And Dane Judy Dench is straight away going in for retraining. Lockdown is pointless. If every unit of the game is going to have lightning reflexes, there is no reason whatsoever to take it. None. Promotions, Jamie Lee Curtis, you got one. <laughs> Sigourney Weaver. You know, 14 missions and 14 kills is actually pretty pathetic. Maybe I won't be sad to see her go. What abilities have we got for Jamie Lee? Kubikiri, special shot against most enemies who've taken any damage, any critical hit kills them. Regular hits do half damage, requires two turns, and has a... Yeah, we're never going to take that because Jamie Lee Curtis doesn't critical for shit as a squad side sniper. That's garbage. Clutch shot. Once permission, fire a pistol shot that cannot miss. Garbage. Steady hands. If you did not let him move last turn, gain 10 aim and 10 critical chance. Well, it's bad. But it's really the only ability that sort of synergizes with anything else she has at all. Man, snipers are hot trash. No other promotions. So the other promotion that we did get on the mission, I guess, went to Sigourney Weaver and therefore was completely wasted. Beautiful. Combat Rush. It's plus 16 will and may have some other effect, but if it's a plus willpower one. When you kill an enemy with a 7 tiles temporarily, receive bonuses to aim, critical chance, and mobility with a 5 turn cooldown. That's goddamn pointless then. We also picked up a laser sight and an advanced scope. The advanced scope we will use for someone because we have a bunch of people who are actually just rocking regular scope. Reduce the avatar progress by free. Progress on the avatar project is delayed. That'll give us an opportunity to reestablish our safety valve as well as get some training and whatnot done. And maybe find a replacement grenadier for the woefully underperforming Sigourney Weaver to whom I'm strangely attached. I don't know why I was so salty about her getting killed. I didn't realize she was that shitty. Maybe I'm less upset now. I'm not less over this episode, though. If you enjoyed it, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Of course, your support does really mean a lot. And if you'd like to hear... More upbraiding of someone who is vastly my literary superior, and Robert Heinlein. You could consider subscribing as well, because, hey, you don't have to be a master chef to know that a meal is a piece of shit. You just got to put it in your mouth. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.